A hydrogen bond per se is not but a it is real an bond. It is a mild form of an electrostatic interaction. Think of, uh, think of uh, you know, if you have the opposite poles of a magnet, this is what happens. So, how is a hydrogen bond formed? So, for example, here you will see that oxygen and oxygen and carbon. Um, the oxygen is what is called electronegative, and I'll explain this a little more. And when something is electronegative, it draws the electrons towards it or the electron density towards it. So oxygen is a little more electronegative, which means that though we say that these bonds are shared, it draws this electron density towards it. So this becomes slightly more negative and this becomes slightly more positive. Similarly, you have this nitrogen of this amine group, this nitrogen in the amine group attached to a hydrogen and nitrogen is a little more electropositive and therefore what it does is it drags a little of that density away it becomes slightly negative and this becomes slightly positive slightly negative atom finds itself in the vicinity of a slightly positive atom and there's that electrostatic kind of an uh, you know things that are not alike will interact between an adenine and a thymine two hydrogen bonds sustain it and three hydrogen bonds sustain it and when you you know so hydrogen bond is essentially critical literally critical for life it's something that you don't normally think of because it's not a real bond but it is it is it is very important the fact that um, and we look at an example of water being sustained by hydrogen bonds is what allows it allows it to be crucial to life so again these are hydrogen bonds and what are hydrogen bonds it, i told you about this slight positive and slight negative charge so we have fluorine which is electronegative so it draws and this is the greek the fourth letter of the greek alphabet delta so it's a delta negative delta positive which means it's drawing the electron density away from though it's a shared bond similarly for water and similarly for nitrogen okay when you talk in terms of electropositivity and electronegativity think in terms of the periodic table so these uh, columns in the periodic table are called groups and rows in the periodic table are called periods and so if you see at this period as it, as you go from as you go from left to right as i draw this you'll see that fluorine is electronegative it's the most electronegative compound so electronegative which means it's going to really draw density away from from the other atom with which it shares electrons Okay, so fluorine is more than oxygen is more than nitrogen. Okay, and this is the, gives you the perspective of the periodic table in terms of, so things that are towards this side and higher, don't worry about these because these are noble elements. Um, they are mostly, under un, unless the conditions are very drastic, they are not reactive. But these compounds, these compounds, as you go towards this side, the electronegativity increases, electropositivity increases in this direction. So, coming back to our our compounds, th therefore you see this is elect uh, electronegative, hydrogen fluoride, hydrofluoric acid, water, and, and ammonia, or NH3. Now, I think while we, while we are part of this discussion, let's kind of understand why why hydrogen bonding is important um, important to life not only in to, when you look at when we come to the discussion of the structure of proteins we'll see that um, hydrogen bonds are um, important because an alpha helix is sustained because of a hydrogen bond a beta strand because of slightly weaker hydrogen bond a, a stretched version of hydrogen bond and when you have random coils or loops or or for the large part a secondary structure which doesn't have um, uh, a, a specific structure, um, a part of a protein which does not have a specific structure, you realize that that is a uh, that is because there is no hydrogen bonding. Okay, so let's look at one example, and I want you to focus on this part. So what this does is it gives us the boiling points of various compounds in terms of why it is why it's important why it's important so why is why is something gas all of these are under ambient condition gases but let's focus on this part so you have we we looked at hydrogen fluoride that this fluorine is fluorine is the most electronegative and will draw the density away to give it a strong delta negative and a delta positive 
uh, oxygen is the electronegative here and, and nitrogen and ammonia is electronegative here. But what you'll realize is that the stronger the electronegativity, the stronger is the hydrogen bond. Okay. And, but what you'll realize is if you look at the boiling points, water is at 100 degrees Celsius. Um, under ambient conditions, typically hydrogen fluoride is barely liquid, mostly gaseous. And ammonia is liquid under very, very, under very cold conditions. So the question then is, well, if hydrogen fluoride forms the, the strongest bond, uh, the strongest hydrogen bond because its electronegativity is highest in the sense that this hydrogen with another a fluorine of a hydrofluoric acid or an HF, then why, why is water the high boiling point? Okay, remember when you go from liquid to gas, you have to be able to supply enough energy to break bonds. And if this is the strongest, why, why does it take more energy for oxygen, for oxygen and water? And that is because for every oxygen, there are two hydrogen bonds. So the, you have to have a greater amount of energy to break all those hydrogen bonds. And that is important because un under ambient conditions, water has to remain liquid. Well, if that, if you consider that argument, then why not ammonia, right? Why not ammonia? Uh, because ammonia now has three. Because what we are trying to do is, what we see here is a fine, is a fine line of distinction between the strength of the hydrogen bond and the number of hydrogen bonds. So though ammonia has three hydrogen bonds associated with it, and each of these hydrogens can interact with three other nitrogens to form hydrogen bonds, there's a greater number of bonds. But this, because nitrogen is the least electronegative, the strengths of these hydrogen bonds are not, are not strong enough. Okay, so most electronegative or the most electronegative electropositive combination, but there's more bonds to be broken here. Okay, and this is one of the reasons why water is necessary for life and it has to remain liquid under ambient conditions.